So let's take a look at a recent clinical trials data on the use of bictegravir as initial therapy. This is a study that was uh, conducted, multinational study that I was the lead investigator on. It compared bictegravir TAF FTC for, versus dolotegravir TAF FTC, and results were very similar. About 90% of patients were successfully treated in both treatment arms. And if you look at the, um, the pr protocol analysis, 99% were successfully treated by week 48. Importantly, in neither study arm was, resistant, was, was there any resistance in any study subject. I think what this study shows us is that with our currently recommended regimens, essentially all of the people who are taking their medications successfully with good adherence are going to be suppressed, virally suppressed. One other regimen worth mentioning that is not on the guidelines yet, except as an alternative, is Doravarine. Doravarine is a new non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor approved in September of 2018. It has been shown to have comparable virologic efficacy with efavirenz and darunavir as part of initial regimens, and the data are shown here uh, on the slide. It's known to have fewer CNS adverse events than efavirenz and a better lipid profile than both efavirenz and darunavir. There were very few women enrolled in these clinical trials, and as a result, we do not have any experience with doravirine in pregnancy. I should mention though that the NNRTI class, there is a longstanding use of NNRTIs in pregnancy and it's possible that Doravarine will have a role for treatment of HIV infected women of childbearing potential in the future. What about two drug combination regimens for initial therapy? The best data come from the Gemini 1 and Gemini 2 studies, which were identical. They compared a two drug regimen of dolotegravir lamivudine versus the three drug regimen of dolotegravir plus TDF and FTC. As demonstrated in the table, virologic response rates were excellent, again, in the low 90% range. And there were no patients who developed treatment emergent resistance during the course of the study. One thing that's important is that the DHHS guidelines now list this regimen, dolotegravir lamivudine, as an important important option for treatment naive patients who cannot take tenofovir or abacavir. Because this is really changing the paradigm of HIV therapy, going from three drugs to two drugs, we await further follow-up data of this regimen to ensure that patients do not develop uh, resistance or other problems. One other two-drug regimen to mention as a suppressive regimen is cabotegravir and ropivirine. This is only for treatment experienced patients who are virologically suppressed. It's a long-acting injection of cabotegravir and ropivirine. And the first of these studies, the FLARE studies and the ATLAS study, we know from a press release that these are non-inferior to continued oral therapy. So when I talked about changing the paradigm with two-drug treatment in the dolotegravir lamivity and Gemini studies, this particular intervention, a once-monthly injection of two different antivirals really does change the way we approach treatment. And we await data on this in this population that we're discussing today, HIV-infected women. There are some data that cabotegravir may have a longer half-life, slower rate of elimination than uh, in women than it does in men. So additional clinical trials of dolutegravir and lamivudine should be mentioned, including a small pilot study that I was involved in called ASPIRE, which showed that patients who were switched from a triple therapy regimen to dolutegravir lamivudine did maintain virologic suppression. A much larger study called TANGO is currently ongoing, and we expect to see data on this strategy from this study later this year. So to summarize some of the data that I presented in module one, many regimens are recommended for women with HIV. In fact, uh, women with HIV should be treated with essentially the same regimens that men with HIV uh, have. However, uh, women of childbearing potential, especially women who express the desire for pregnancy, we should definitely test them for pregnancy before starting and discuss the benefits and risks of using dolutegravir.